Hello and welcome to our introductory video on related rates. Now just to warn you, this uh, example that I'm going to show you is not terribly difficult. Uh, you'll find that most related rate problems are going to be a bit trickier. Uh, but I just want to go over what are re how related rates work, uh, what you're trying to look for, and then uh, what makes the problems hard is usually trying to differentiate and trying to come up with the formulas. So let's say I have a circle. Now every second the circle's radius increases by one. So now it's two. Increases one again, three. So three seconds. At four seconds it's four. So again it increases every second by one meter. Alright, so DRDT. Now DRDT stands for the rate of change of the radius. So it's kind of like the speed of the radius it changes one meter per second. Now if I were to find the area of all of these circles, I'd have this. Now clearly we all know that the area of a circle is directly related to the radius of the circle. All right, But in a related rate, I'm not interested so much in how is the area related, but the change in the area. Like how is it increasing faster every second? Is the area decreasing as time goes on? That type of thing. So notice that between the first and second second the area has increased by about nine and then between the second and thir third second it's increased about by you know 16 and then from 28 to 50 that's a change in about 22 and then from 50 to 78 that's about a change in 28 so notice that every second as time goes on, the change in the area is getting bigger. And that's what I'm trying to find. Now I just want to write out the information we know so far. The radius at every second, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this was the area. If I were to plot these points on a graph, notice that as time goes on, the area is getting bigger faster. Like if I were to take a look at the slopes here, notice that the slope here, that would be the basically the speed of the area over time. It's, it's not that big, but every second it starts to get steeper and steeper. So how does DRDT affect DADT? Like how does the change in the area affect the, the change, sorry, the change in the radius affect the change in the area? Well, again, DADT is the slopes of these, all right, because it's the change in the area. Now, we know that DADT is directly related to DRDT. All right, we just got to figure out how. So start with writing out the given, given information in the problem. For us, we know DRDT is 1. That's the speed at which the radius increases. We also know a circle because we're dealing with circles. Um, I think sometimes you'll see this in textbooks or in other videos where um, I could have dropped a pebble into the center of uh, you know, in a, some water or lake and the ripples move out and you're following one of those ripples. So that's, you can think of it like that. Now the area with respect to the radius is pi r squared. But you gotta be very careful because it's kind of in the background. My, my actual variable is time, right? DRDT, what's happening to the radius? What's happening to the area with respect to time? Like what's happening as time goes on? So we actually want to use that notation because the area and is directly related to the radius, but the radius changes with respect to time. So our variable is actually T. All right, which is why we did implicit differentiation, which I'll show you in a second. Now you're going to write out what's unknown, right? the thing you're trying to find, which is DADT. Now usually when you're asked these questions, you're trying to find DADT at a specific time. Um, you know, like I could say, what's DADT at after five seconds? And then that would tell me. All right, but right now I just want to find DADT. So we need a formula, and this is true for every single related rate problem. We need a formula that relates your vari all your variables together. Now for us, it's very simple. All right, A equals pi r squared. We already know that. 
So the next step is to get dA dt, we need to differentiate both sides. So we're going to be doing something like this. d dt of that, and then d dt of this side as well. So what happens when you differentiate a of t with respect to t? Well, you're going to get dA dt. Now what happens when you differentiate pi r squared? Now when you differentiate, you still have a power rule. You're going to bring it down. Now this is going to be a chain rule though. So when you bring the 2 down, you have your r of t left over. I mean you can, and you can write, you know, a 1 here if you want. You subtracted 1 off uh, the original exponent. But then you're going to have to immediately multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t, which is dr dt. Okay then, that's pretty much it, right? What you can see is that my change in area is written in terms of the change of another variable. And that's what a related rate is, is trying to figure out how to write the change in one variable with respect to the change of another. Now at this point, what I could do is ask a question like this. What is the rate of change in the area when the radius is 4? Well, what did I just find? I, I found that dA dt was 2 pi r of t times dr dt. And I know some stuff. So for example, I know that r of 4, the radius at 4, was 4. I know dr dt was 1, or is 1, uh, and I'm pretty much ready to go. dA dt is 2 pi 4 times 1, and that's just 8 pi. Now 8 pi, I'm just going to type that in real fast to see what it is approximately. 25.13, so 25.13. So that means my change in the area after four seconds, like the speed, is 25 meters per second. Now if you take a look at this, what's the slope right here? It's actually around 25. As I said in the beginning of the video, that this wasn't a terribly difficult problem. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. There are tons of these videos online where the questions are much more difficult. Uh, so I would advise you to just get on YouTube and type in related rates and you're going to find a whole bunch of them to watch. Good luck.